Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again, TGIF, thank God it's Friday, made it through another week, and uh, we're having a lot of fun uh, the past week, we've had a lot of projects to get into, a uh, couple things to talk about today, first of all, we're going to talk about the poor man's flea market this week, you know, this whole month has been surprisingly good, I guess a lot of people are cleaning out their homes uh, because getting ready for, you know, company and everything to come over. So they're getting rid of stuff. I mean, it's out there. There's a lot of stuff, more than I would expect at this time. After Christmas, a lot more stuff. But a lot of you enjoy the poor man's flea market. In fact, a friend of the show, good friend, the James Cahill, uh, had sent over this small LED 9-volt flashlight that he said I could use for the poor man's flea market. He enjoys the show. He was a former scoutmaster. We have a lot in common. And he's also an amateur radio operator, KB1LOY. So uh, thank you for that, James. But let's check out what I saw this week at the Poor Man's Flea Market. Some interesting stuff. Okay, it was a uh, nice night. Nice and clear, cool out. And uh, check this out. What a beautiful bike this is. Huh? It looks like brand new. One. This is a Zyke Sabre. Now, Zyke has recently... Uh, gone out of business but this bike wasn't cheap when it sold uh but it's a, a different type of bike it uses like a stepper motion where you step on the two back uh bars there to propel yourself forward uh this thing is in working condition all needed was air in the tires again not a cheap bike a g very much a gimmicky bike but still it's something to see that in the trash like that huh they're not like i said unusual I would have taken that years ago when I was uh, doing bikes, but uh, now I don't. And check this out. More grills. You know, people use grills here one time. They don't realize you can use them more than once. Uh, over here, nice. This is the same place that was throwing out that Juki sewing machine. I feel bad for not taking. 805 Road King could have used it, he said, so I felt really terrible. But uh, this here is uh, one of those kind of exercise bikes, and it looks like it's pretty well made. Pretty heavy duty, huh? So uh, that's cool. And then right across the street from here, this little mini McLaren. <laughs> I always get a kick out of these small cars. And behind it, the obligatory Dyson, the piece of junk manufacturer that uses more plastic than anybody else on the planet. And, uh, and like I said, it was a, a nice night. And on the way home, I saw this here, a uh, little curio cabinet. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, T please tell me you grabbed that. But no, it was kind of press wood. If I'm going to display one of these in my house, I'm going to make it myself. But it was interesting. And check this out. Pay dirt. <laughs> so I made money on this walk. When does that ever happen? Pretty interesting, the stuff that's thrown out day to day. Now, of all that stuff, and again, I stopped taking stuff. However... Believe it or not, I passed it by, but I came back for one item. Can you imagine what it is? Let's take a look okay, right Okay, so this is what I wound up taking. The reason I took it is because my girlfriend's mother just turned 82, God bless her. And I said, boy, this would be good just to keep her, you know, active. She likes to walk and stuff. This would be good. It's a little desk cycle. And what it is, is basically a stationary bike without the seat and uh it's really well made i'm going to show you what's in here it's heavy and uh they aren't cheap you know these things run around 200 dollars. so let's see if i can uh, we'll clean it up and uh see if we can't get this to work again and, and let's see what's going on with okay, this i removed the cover just to see the insides because this thing is so well made considering what it's used for now if you look over here that you can see there's dual belts these two belts run um you know back i'll show you when i'm moving it uh those two belts you see they drive this counterweight okay and that's it's so smooth these two belts run that and that counterweight must be steel because they got two heavy duty neodymium magnets there and that's what creates the friction on this drive this over here for your tension control as i turn the tension control you can see what happens it lowers these two magnets the more magnets that uh, engage with that disc the more resistance you have and it does give quite a bit of resistance but no 
drag, you know, as if you have something like a break or something. It's just resistance. It's a very smooth resistance. What an ingenious design, right? Also, which interesting is uh, this here still works. You could see it has your RPM and we'll turn this here and I'll show you how that works. Here we have our RPM. Okay, we're up to uh, 34, 39. So if you want to keep it a certain RPM, uh, it also has, let's see, distance tells you how far as you're pedaling, that'll tell you the distance, the time, if you want to go by, you know, time over here as a little stop clock and calories, how many calories you burn. You can see I burned two calories already. I'm doing very well. Uh, super smooth, super quiet. What a nice piece of machinery this is, huh? Very impressed. What a good find. Let's clean it up, get it back now, together. Believe it or not, the only problem I could see with this was the front feet. See these rubber feet here? Well, and when I was walking home, one of them actually popped off. Thank God I heard it fall. But it's kind of a little bit loose. So a couple wraps of uh, electrical tape on here. You got to kind of feel it out till it just goes on where it's got to be like that, where it won't come off. That's it. Okay, change of plans. I had originally uh, expected to give this to my girlfriend's mother. But my girlfriend saw it. She thought it would be perfect for work, that she could uh, bring it to work and use it while she's at work. So that's where it's going. But how great is this? What a great find. What a great unit. So <clears throat> I don't know if you know anybody that's elderly, that might need something that's, in, you know, they're going to the house. But this is well worth the money because I've seen the cheaper ones. In fact, I bought my mother a cheaper one, one of them, you know, early ones because my mother needed a little mobility or whatever. And when she was alive and, and then uh i don't know it wasn't that good it was the restriction was that this is nice a nice unit worth you know buy once cry once okay next up you know uh it is around the holiday season and uh this is a rough time of year for me i i tend to miss my family around this thing you know the people that have passed on my parents my aunts my uncles you know all the people that i couldn't wait to get to the grown-up table to sit at during dinner and, and now they're all gone you know it's kind of just i'm just left but i think about i miss them and i and at this time of year a lot of times when i go into the attic i'll i'll find things that remember and i always this time of year i always make it a point to go through some of the old slides and photographs of uh of my family you know and it just makes me feel better you know i know sometimes you say it, it makes you melancholy but it, it doesn't it, it 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 really helps but I was up the attic the other day and I, I came across this. Now, you remember about five months ago, I did a kind of a uh, cleanup restoration on a, a Tonka truck that I've had for a long time. I had a good time with that. And I found another one. This one I got after the white one, but this one I always, I always liked this one. Let me show you what I'm talking about. And here it is. I got to tell you, it's a little exciting for me. <laughs> you know, one thing I thank God, I've never lost that kid in me. I still find this cool. This is a uh, Tonka Mighty Wrecker. This is came from the, the 70s, obviously. It's a uh, a vintage Wrecker. And, and you can see this one was a bigger one. Yet quite a big model. Obviously all steel. I guess that's what we liked about them. You can really play with these things and not worry about uh, breaking them like plastic that came along later on. Um, this one here had the twin booms in the back, which as kids, you know, look at that. You know, you know what what you, what you could lift or tow or drag, and I often wonder. I said I've never seen a twin boom <laughs> in my life. I got to ask my buddy Bruce Groton. Bruce Groton had his own tow company and had a ton of cool trucks, like all kinds of trucks like these. And uh, I always try and pick Bruce's brain whenever I see him about different vehicles. I wonder if if he if he's ever used or seen or did they even have a twin boom wrecker. Because I've only seen ones with one, you know, in the back, you know, with the booms in the back. But anyway, you can see what kind of shape this is in. I just want to do a cleanup because it's going in the attic. And I, I just, I, I never did one. You can see the scuffs around here. I'm not going to do any touch up painting or anything. I just want to clean it up. We'll get some 70 or 40 year old rubbing, polishing compound out and some wax and and, you know, clean it up a little bit and see uh, if we can make it somewhat presentable. Now, there are some YouTube channels that do fantastic restorations on these. But I'm just, like I said, I just want to clean this up because you see here, like, um, see over here where the booms went. 
you from going back and forth at war summer. Can you imagine if this thing could talk about some of the adventures and sand pits this thing has had or towing vehicles? But so what we're going to do is uh, just clean it up and uh, get rid of that rust. I don't mind if it's pure silver from like wear. I just don't want it rusty. And uh, and then compound. And we got a little bit of, this is always a point. See that little bit of rust around the edges you get sometimes? I don't mind if it's bare metal. I just don't want to see the brown from rust. So let's get to that. And we're calling this project done. As always, these are a lot of fun. And although that they take probably as much time to do this as they would a full size because they, you just have to get in those small spots. But what do you think of that? So what we did now, there's kind of a rule. If, if anything you're restoring has 75% original paint that's savable, you're probably better off not repainting the item. And this is, this one here was in really good shape. Other than the fact it had a few spots that we took care of. You can see, look at this. Bruce Groton gave me these pulleys. How cool are they to be on here? Now, normally, if you were going to use a pulley like this, you would have the rope go through the pulley and reattach. Uh, but it's just for looks. It's just right to scale. So how cool is that? And um, there we go. We did. Uh, we cleaned it up. We compounded it. We waxed it um, over here where those rust spots were. We took it down pretty much to bare metal. And we lubricated it just like it would be in real life with lithium grease. And look at that. Smooth as can be. And how these work, you pull these out to lower it. And when you want to lock it, you push it in and it locks on this little tab here when you're going to do any kind of towing. So same thing if you're going to lift it up, you put it up like that, put it here. So there we go. What do you think of this? The Tonka... Mid-70s, Mighty Wrecka. Came in a bunch of different colors, blue, white. Also, uh, there's a gentleman who made one of these full size. How cool is that? There's a guy that's that's uh, talented to be able to do that uh, just from, from this. But I like it. It's boxy. It's kind of ugly. One passenger. It's cool. Real cool. So in closing, uh, I don't know what it is about big construction. Anything big. Big trains, big ships, big construction vehicles. I swear to God, I think I made it up to like six years old and I just stopped. My maturity level just stopped because I just find that stuff fascinating. All them big vehicles, all them tow trucks and anything like that. Always loved it. Anyway, uh, thanks so much for tuning in. Hope you have a great weekend. We'll see you again on Monday. Take care now. Bye-bye.